is an age of darkness. This is Resistance and VX from PXR live with Planet Resistance Radio. Just want to give a big ups to everybody. Um, we're going to get David Crowley on in a more, who is the director, writer, and producer of the movie Grey State, greystatemovie.com. Um, thoroughly recommend that. Go and check that out. Uh, what up, VX? Want to give a big up to Elle, who is on as well. Um, just want to do a quick PXR update just before we get this going, homie. Yeah, definitely. Uh, got my battle dropping with S. Graham on Shark Tank Battlegrounds real soon. Me and Mac are going to be putting out Predatory Spiritualism, the second single of uh, EOF, Empire of Fear LP, next week, featuring Chief Kamachi, produced by Amos the Ancient Prophet, and Tone Spliff, the, our DJ on the hook. Uh, there's a Tone Spliff show coming up September 29th in Boston. I'm going to be there. And other than that, just uh, stay locked here at uh, Planet X Radio. This is where you get all the info from. Okay, cool man. Uh, let's do this then. Let's um, get David on and get into this, peeps. Go, go. If anyone's got Follow any questions, go on VX. Follow the film at Grey State Movie, uh, graystatemovie.com. Donate at indiegogo.com slash graystatemovie. Uh, donations are going well, so keep, let's keep that up. No doubt, no doubt. Hello, Gaz, can you hear me? Yes, hey, sir. hello, David. Um, I've got your brother coming through nice. Thanks for coming yeah. on the show, man. And how is it going, dude? Oh man, it's going awesome. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes, yes, no, no, no problem. Great, Thank great you stuff. for coming through, sir. Um, well. Just, just before we get in, get into um, this, do you want to just give a a quick shout out of um, where people can check Grey State out, contact you, and you know any other sites you want to shout out as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, if you're looking for Grey State, go to graystatemovie.com. Otherwise, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we are on Indiegogo. We're everywhere. If you Google Grey State, you're going to get like 60 pages of hits. Good stuff. Sweet, sweet. No doubt that's dope stuff. Um, well, I suppose just to, uh, to get get things off, I've got a general question for you. Um, you know, um, what music are you personally into? Um, you know, are you into any underground hip hop, punk, metal, or maybe jazz, blues? Um, you know, what, what do you particularly like to listen to? Oh man, I'm all over the place, but it's nothing you're going to hear on the radio. I don't really care for hip hop, but I appreciate okay. it. You know, same same thing with yeah. country and blues. I'm not really into that stuff, but I appreciate the talent that goes behind it. I like, um, I definitely like heavy stuff. I'm kind of getting into metal lately, surprisingly, which, you know, I've never really been into metal my whole life, but I really I really like the energy of it. But a couple of my favorite bands include Muse, um, Seosin, uh, definitely like heavy stuff, a lot of guitars. Nice. Something that will really get you going and it's got that um, ferocity to it then. Yeah. <laughs> dope, dope, dope stuff. Um, I suppose that part lays into the, the, you know, the next question then. Um, you know, who is in charge of the score and the soundtrack for Grey State? Oh my goodness, we've had like at least 50 requests for composers to, to score for Grey State, but so far it's just been me. Um, the score that you heard in the trailer, that was, that was me. Um, I went for, I'd go for walks around the block for a couple miles and just compose music in my head. And I started hearing these drums, you know, the, the trademark drums in the trailer. I'm like, you know, that, that's just, it's just loud and it's a, mm-hmm. it just forces its way in, you know, and I, I kind of heard it in my head and I went back and I do some work on my Pro Tools setup and eventually that score just emerged. And um, I, I'm not saying I'm a good musician. I played guitar, especially when I was deployed to Afghanistan. I, I would have a lot of time to play guitar, and I got really good. But I haven't really practiced since I've been home. But 
I play drums, guitar, piano, and bass. Not very well, but well enough to get by. Uh, but I think I think for the uh, the actual film, once we get down to scoring it, I'm definitely looking into a Hans Zimmer for the for the loud nice. parts, or definitely um, man, what's his name? Thomas Newman and Clint Mansell are definitely some inspirations. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, you, do you want to get into the next two questions, VX? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Uh, I did have a follow up to that as well. Um, would you possibly um, be interested in um, giving independent artists the opportunity to submit tracks uh, for the film? If, if you know, obviously, if the content matched uh, what you're trying to do and matched your vision. Yeah, absolutely. I've gotten, like I said, like 50 requests. And a lot of guys are like, hey, I, I represent this band. I would like to compose a song for free and just donate it to the project. And I've accepted at least six songs like that. And uh, other, other artists are at, like right now, using um, some recordings taken on set. So some of the screaming and, and uh, marching and yelling that you hear in the actual trailer, like the actual Gray State stuff that we recorded on set, I have that available on a Dropbox. So if you're an artist and you're looking to like, mix that into a track that you want to compose for Gray State, yeah, uh, just shoot me an email and I, I can get you hooked up. And uh, yeah, oh. I mean, every little bit oh. helps. That's sweet, dude. We're, we're definitely going to have to do that because uh, I know a few people that are probably definitely going to want to use those samples, so that's definitely cool. Um, so I guess I'll kick off to my next question. Uh, basically, I watched one of you guys' other uh, interviews, and you made a reference to uh, Minority Report as well as uh, Scanner Darkly. We were just wondering about, we're huge Philip K. Dick fans over here as far as uh, you know his literature as uh, Blade Runner, Total Recall, Scanner Darkly, all that stuff, Screamers. And uh, we're just wondering, are you guys into uh, the Philip K. Dick and you know the, the movies that uh, became from his books from the different directors and whatnot? Yeah, you kind of broke up at the end there. What was your direct question? Yeah, we were just wondering if, um, it, as far as like the influences of uh, Gray State, are, are you guys into the uh, uh, science fiction author uh, Philip K. Dick? Uh, so, you know, with the, such as the movies of uh, Blade Runner and A Scanner Darkly and things like that, obviously Minority Report. I'm not familiar with the author, uh, and I'm not really directly influenced by movies because if you're going to make a movie and you're going to rip off someone else's movie, <laughs> then uh, that, that's pretty lame. Uh, I get a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of inspiration from books, and uh, most of my inspiration comes from real life, which is the most horrifying thing about a great state. But oh, definitely, yeah. Minority Report and those kind of movies, they do a really good job of foretelling possibilities, you know, especially like Blade Runner. That's pretty old now. Yep, but uh, yep. that really, that really, it's able to anticipate trends a lot sooner than these other movies like Minority Report. All that does is it glosses over with, like the newer technologies that are possible that were just impossible to predict back in like the Blade Runner days. But it's all it's all yep. the same. So 1984 is accurate. We're we're watching it come to pass, but it's just it's got new uh, toys, new jingles added to it. <laughs> that, yep. that you let like RFID and uh, eye scanning and that kind of stuff. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, you uh, got it answered a little bit of my next question but it was uh what directors are you influenced by if any if not direct films uh you know do you have a top three favorite directors or anything of that sort yeah absolutely i don't think that i follow a director's specific style i know I, that i like directors i like christopher nolan uh but not mm -hmm. lately i wasn't a fan of the new batman film mm -hmm. but I'm de i love the way he sets up stories especially um that, what's that magic film that he made Oh, what was that? The Prestige. Yep. The Prestige was great. Uh, I love Nolan's older films like that, and uh, Dark Knight was definitely awesome. But if, 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 if I'm going to answer that question, um, what I really follow as far as directors are the, the, uh, the classics like Hitchcock and Ford, because mm -hmm. they were really able to create filmmaking. And it's not like, like these days we kind of take it for granted, you just point a camera at something, but the psychology behind composition and framing and where you put your horizon line and how you're going to communicate certain things with your camera those guys those old guys they're the ones who created that so uh, yep. i definitely follow those guys and that, that's what spielberg did that's what lucas did so that's why they're great today but they had their masters as well definitely uh, how about somebody like kurosawa you know i i, I saw seven samurai and it, it, I'm kind of embarrassed because yeah, I'm a film director, but I, <laughs> I hardly ever see any film. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I, to those old directors. Probably and, a good uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 
I know Kurosawa is awesome, but I haven't seen enough of his work to really speak on it. And you know, I'm ashamed to say that, but it's on my no to do list. My to do list is growing by the day, and I'm doing my best. <laughs> no worries. I'm, I'm a huge Coppola fanboy, so there's no worries there. Um, it's, it's funny that also, also um, goes into two, two questions I had for you, David, as well. Um, when you were saying, you know, you're a fan of the old directors such as Hitchcock, um, you know, do you feel that um, Hollywood has lost um, a bit of its creativity and originality as there seems to be a reliance on remaking old movies or recent films that are not that old? Um, you know, we're seeing a constant influx of, you know, 3D as well. You know, it's probably going to get to like um, uh, Spider-Man 24 by the time it's going. So, you know, what are your thoughts on that <laughs> being a filmmaker? Well, first of all, uh, 3D is a gimmick. It this will pass. Um, it'll be eventually interactive, immersive sort of psychological experiences, and that's the way film is developing. As far as Hollywood goes, it's a dinosaur business model, and it operates on money. It's an industry. So they're essentially going to make the films that sell. Films that, I mean, people who write films have no lack for creativity, but those films might not necessarily be purchased and made into films. And Hollywood's going to go with what sells. So if people continue to go to Batman movies, then those are the movies that are going to continue to get made. And if they like 3D, then they're going to keep making 3D movies. That's why um, with the advent of prosumer technology, you're seeing the emergence of a lot of independent filmmakers who come out of nowhere. And their films might, might not be as technically awesome or whatever. They don't have the budget of Michael Bay, but the storytelling is amazing in many cases. And uh, I think that, well, in any case, in any case, I can write the best film ever, but as Jesus said, there's nothing new under the sun, and that is a reflection of all the hundreds of thousands of things I've seen and heard over the course of my lifetime. So nothing is going to be new. No film is new. It all borrows from something else. But that doesn't mean that we can't still make good films. It's just Hollywood's a poor example because they're going to make the things that sell the most. Mm -hmm. Very true. Mm, I think so. I mean, I am the um, absolute unfortunate displeasure of um, seeing Judge Phil with my mates and the, the the one with Sylvester Stallone's bad enough but this one with Carla and it's just um, please don't go because it would damage anybody's health having to sit through it um, but it, it's it it's it seems to be we've got that at the moment in movies and music as a whole um, where they just tend to you know repackage everything because they look just to sell it and I think that's a, a really great valid point David that you know, everything's probably, you know, it's already been done and nothing's going to be new now, but um, I think if you look at the more, you know, underground filmmakers and independent filmmakers, they can put um, a bit more of a fresh take on something and, and put something across um, that maybe just has a little bit more, you know, depth to it. So it's something I would like to see instead of this constant um, 3D garbage that we're being subjected to, but... As you say, it's um, a trend, and I hope it goes away very, very soon. Um, it won't. Nothing going to stop because uh, we're producing a society of wankers, and uh, yeah. we have <laughs> yeah. recently we have collective amnesia on a on a quicker and quicker turnaround. We don't remember things five years ago. I remember when Spider Man yeah. came out, like what Spider Man, and now we're already on like the next remake of Spider Man. Oh. Yeah. Story, story that. We would, and people don't remember, and more and more importantly, people don't care. Mm -hmm. So the YouTube audience, they're accustomed to crap. They don't care. They just want to see the next bit of uh, special effects wizardry or failing bat, boobs, blood, and guns. <laughs> yep. Very true, very yeah. true. Yeah, um, yeah, no doubt. We've covered a little bit here, but um, this is uh, our next one. Do you feel that uh, independent films are overtaking Hollywood in terms of creative thought, creative content, etc.? And I mean, I suppose you've touched on that a little bit. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think that the, uh, the dinosaur model, as I call it, of Hollywood is dying out because with the internet, we can now communicate to everyone simultaneously, you know, depending how, how far our reach is. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'm talking to you guys right now. I'm in Minnesota, you know, and we can talk and we can get this out and we can spread ideas very, very quickly. And uh, oh, we're yeah. seeing... You know, entrepreneurs like, for example, man, what's his name? I just wrote a report on this guy. Kevin Smith. Yeah, Kevin Smith. He is 
you know, he brags a lot, but he's, he's done a lot for indie film because he's able to uh, make a film on a micro budget, market it, and distribute it all on his own outside of the distribution model of Hollywood. Now, the, the Grey State effort recognizes that we can make a film for dirt cheap. Mitch, uh, my partner Mitch and I made the trailer for six thousand dollars and did everything completely in house, everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, Alex Jones said it looks like a million bucks, and you know that, that's oh, yeah. cool. That's and we cheated oh, yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But but if we're gonna make any money, like real money, we have to observe the current Hollywood system because people at this point in time still go to theaters. And if we're gonna go to, if we're gonna get Gray State into theaters, we have to play their game. We have to get the right kind of distribution model and agreement set up and we have to think on those terms but kevin smith is showing that there are independent models of distribution available but they haven't been properly capitalized on yet like video on demand now we can go straight to netflix that's not currently the best model to go because we're not going to make the most money and that's unfortunately the way it has to work for now Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, I want to congratulate you guys on getting your first uh, five grand uh, donation today. I've been uh, monitoring the Indiegogo page closely, and we're up about above 22k now, which is pretty nice. Things have picked up in the last few days. Yeah, it certainly has. I was really excited to see that this morning, <laughs> but still, we're schedule. You know, we're supposed to be at something like 26,000 right now if we hope to actually make our goal. But that's not to say we won't have a hero swoop in at the end and uh, pick up the slack. Well, no worries. I'm going to be doing the uh, Champion of Liberty package myself in a couple weeks here, so I'm not afraid to announce that here on the show, and I hope that will help us along. Oh, thank you, hero. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess I am the uh, the unsung hero. And uh, the other question we've got, I've got for you here is, this is a bit of uh, a random one, but uh, what would be your the most original screenplay in your opinion? Um, you know, be it indie or whatever, doesn't matter, but just most original screenplay. That's a tough one. I'd have to think about it for a while. Um, that is a tough one. <laughs> I, I wish I had time to think about that. Mr. Yeah, we, I mean, we can we can come back to it later if you want. If you want to do a couple more, it's up to you. Yeah, we can think about it for a while. Sure, no problem. Okay, cool. Yes. Yeah, um, I suppose another obvious question, but um, you know, who influenced you to um, get in the film industry? Uh, you know, I'm not really sure. Um, just like how I always knew I was going to reach a certain age and go off and join the military, I always knew I was going to be a filmmaker as well. In high school, I picked up the camera and I started shooting small videos with my friends and everything. And I always kind of had an innate instinct on where to put the camera to get the angle to communicate effectively. And I don't know where that comes from, so I can't really explain that answer, but it's just something I've always really known. I wouldn't say that it's influenced by a certain individual, but I always, I always want to tell stories, you know? Um, I, I always want to tell visual stories, and I just really appreciate the symphony of... Uh, light, color, movement, and sound. And um, what I really appreciate about a, appreciate about a film as, a, as an art medium is that you have the synthesis of emotion and experience. Mm -hmm. So you, you, can, you can definitely uh, communicate that way without you know, beating someone over the head like the latest Dark Knight movie, um, where it's always blasting dramatic music, forcing you to think and feel a certain way about the images. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know a tactical filmmaker will be able to do that thing subtly and, and I think there's a tremendous opportunity for creative expression within that definitely agree dope, dope. Um, I suppose then is <laughs> there uh, anyone who influenced you then to make Grace or was this something that you felt um, strongly about yourself and that you thought, right, I want to do this, I, I want to tell a story about um, what possibly could could happen. Um, I know you mentioned earlier, you know, the old school film directors like Hitchcock and everyone, um, so I was just curious with that. Well, like I said, I definitely want to tell stories, and I want to make films, and that's just what I want to do, because I'm an artist, I'm a storyteller, and... Um, when you when you are brought into this sort of information, and you know what I'm talking about, where uh, your world is not as it seems, you're living in basically the matrix, and you start to break out of the matrix, and you start to wake up. Everyone has an immediate urge to do something about it. Am I right? Oh yeah. Definitely. Okay. Well, I'm a filmmaker, and that's, that was my immediate reaction. I got to tell a story 
from this stuff. So I've been compiling all this research and trying to draw a narrative out of a, um, a fictional story paralleling reality. And uh, I think that in itself is compelling enough, but that's not that I'm taking refuge in the brutality of the context. I'm still attempting to draw a human narrative out of this. So it's not just, it's, it's going to be like Children of Men. It's not just a, uh, a snuff mm. piece like 2012 or Day After Tomorrow. It's uh, Children of Men where you're following these characters and the background is viewed obliquely through the lens of the characters. So the background is not the focus. And I'm, I think the trailer does kind of make that, that argument that this is going to be a lot of explosions and crazy stuff going on and you're just along for the ride. Well, that's not the case. It's going to be an endearing piece about the characters involved. Because really, I mean, thrust into a martial law scenario, which is going to be far more brutal than any of us can imagine, what would you do? What would you do? And uh, these, the decisions that they're going to have to make within this is going to, they're going to be very realistic. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, there's a lot of uh, this kind of research out there. You guys just came off of uh, Prison Planet, and, you know, there's a lot of other... Uh, you know, documentary uh, filmmakers out there now, they're, they're putting out a lot of this sort of information. I understand that Danny has uh, lectured on uh, conspiracy theory for some time. We were just wondering, were there any uh, specific people that you guys um, use for your research or any time before this that possibly influenced, such as like, obviously you just came off of Alex Jones, but what about like David Icke, Jordan Maxwell? Um, have you guys read any of those books or seen any of their documentary films? Oh yeah, we have. But a lot of the most compelling stuff comes from nobodies on the internet, mm -hmm. just writing compelling mm -hmm. articles that happen to reflect reality. So, mm -hmm. uh, a film, uh, the David Icke universe, and you know what I'm talking about with reptilians and reptiles oh, yeah. and other crazy yeah. stuff. Interdimensional aspect is something that can't be denied. So, Gray State does not ignore those things, but it also can't be described as being about those things. Mm -hmm. What I've tried to do within Gray State is make it layered enough so that it works on all levels. So the Christian, the hardcore Christian, can watch Gray State, and if they can get around the, uh, the language and the violence, hopefully mm -hmm. they will extract truths as well as an atheist who's, or maybe that's a bad example, but as well as just a dumb guy who wants to go and see it for the action. You know? Sure, sure. But Absolutely. It functions as a, as a surface level action movie, but also it's, it's extremely layered, and it, and it goes to that David Icke level. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's just, just trying to layer these things together and make them work at the same time but it's definitely not going to be a propaganda piece where this is a crazy movie about interdimensional time travel and uh, here's <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. I mean those it, it exists in the universe where those things can't exist and you'll see the evidence of it but mm -hmm. it's not about it. I missed that you brother just lost you there for a minute. You got me? Yeah, yeah you're back. got you now. Oh, sorry. Repeat that last bit. Uh, we we, we kind of lost you there when you're. Oh, I was just saying that um, it's it's it. The movie will exist in a universe in which the David I kind of material can exist, and you will see the evidence of it. But that's mm -hmm. not necessarily what the movie is going to be about. Because the second you try to prove something like that or make a movie about those things, you have to take that side. And a good film that explores innate human truths will not be propaganda. And it'll it'll give equal credibility to both sides. Absolutely, Indeed. absolutely. Um, here's a question for you. I saw you guys say that um, at the end of the concept trailer, you have a very grimy uh, execution scene in the rain, yet in the interview you guys said that that scene uh, wouldn't exactly be in the film but you would have um, you know in, insinuations to it uh, can you talk about that what I really meant and you know how if you talk to Alec you're going to get pushed he wants to talk about and I got pushed away from elaborating on that yeah absolutely and what I meant there was that we're not going to have a guillotine it's another device that, that I thought up that's going to be oh, a lot outstanding. and a lot more effective and um the reason being is that the guillotine, well, symbolic, is outdated, and it only can kill one guy at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very so true, very true. Public execution model used in Gray State, because that is what it's going to come down to. I mean, when you're going to talk about the inner brutality of the human nature, once you strip away the, the, the veneer of, like, societal structure that keeps it in check, how, how, how bad can that get? So if you have, like, about you in your hometown right now, and uh, the margin of example will be enriched such that not all of your neighbors are classified as dissidents. Mm -hmm. and, and 
round it up just on this new basis and you're going to buy into it because you, you bought into propaganda your whole life and you're going to actually, actually going to go down to your or whatever and watch them be publicly executed moreover great right? they will have it such that you're going to get a communication or whatever you do over text maybe we're like uh, podcast like this elected jury duty to go and operate this machine to kill your neighbors publicly oh, yeah. they're going to do it and I mean, and that's the, that's the deepest, the deepest argument I can make—not argument, but exploration I can make of the human psyche when it's when it's afraid, what it will do, mm-hmm. and turn on people who are not bad. But if you convince people through fear that they are bad, what they're going to do to each other, and, and it goes beyond. It, the scary thing is, it's not chaos in the streets. Mm-hmm. It's it's confined, and I'm going to step up there and all my neighbors rack this device, I'm going to throw the switch that's going to cut off all their heads. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Man. Capable that's... of that. Humans, when they're untrained, as our culture is, our, our culture is untrained, undisciplined, and completely unprepared for any sort of hardship. And that makes us dangerous. Because mm-hmm. the second you that, oh my god, you got to get you got to get away from the stuff goes Yeah. Away. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, and I think as you said, um, if we lost all our electricity and, and technology, um, just seeing how quickly people would then turn on each other, um, you know, are, are very, very, very frightening. But sadly, that is um, a very strong possibility, and especially with, as you just said, how this world is set up now, um, you know, that would, would probably happen as well. Well, I mean, the Grey State uh, concept trailer shows that, too, when she goes to the uh, yeah. store and the uh, grocery shelves are empty. You know, when it's, a, it's yeah. all fun and games when we can go to the grocery store and get the water, but when that's empty and there's nothing left, you know, it's a totally different story, so. They yeah, say exactly. Prepper when they're on a full stomach. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. true, very true. Um, switch gears a little bit, uh, back to the music for a second, because uh, we do have my uh, label Planet X Records here. Has anyone caught your attention in uh, in music recently, be it underground or anything, any band or artist? Doesn't really matter, not specific. Oh, when I was in Tampa, I ran into well, both. Uh, let me take it back. I'm good friends with Jordan Page, who's a real big musician in the Liberty Movement here in the U.S. And uh, Tatiana Mar. They're both. I was actually at a house with all these guys, <laughs> girls. Uh, it was madness. Yeah, it was sweet having talented people. Um, I also ran into the Rebel Inc. band. They're just like um, Rage Against the Machine, only they're not freaking communist. But, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I figured out something to do with them as far as like shooting a music video or getting them involved in a state project somehow. Nice. Put out a hell of a live show. So much energy. That's sweet. Uh, over to you guys for the question. Definitely. I'm definitely going to check that band out, actually. Um, I suppose then... You know, we were talking about, you know, we mentioned earlier about, you know, the remix with Hollywood and, you know, how they're, they're doing that to just basically sell garbage to people. Um, I think that can is reflected in music as well. And I just wondered, um, you know, you're obviously interested in music as well. Um, you know, how do you feel about the state of music at the moment, whether it be popular music or underground music? Do you think it's... Um, and it, as terrible as what we're seeing with all these, um, you know, 3D remakes in Hollywood. You've got the same sort of division in music mm-hmm. as you do film, I think. I think um, if you go underground, you go to the original artists who do their own recording, mm-hmm. have the technical capability. I mean, it's, it's relatively affordable now, and, they, and real artists can get their work across pretty cheaply, and you can actually hear it, and it's not terrible. Like, for example, the album I recorded in Afghanistan through my uh, PC microphone. It's awful. <laughs> but maybe the music, maybe the storytelling within the music, the lyrics, maybe those are where the value is. Anyway, I think you have the same striation of creativity and talent within uh, within music. But I think people are so used to the, the super stylized, super processed sound of commercial music that they don't really listen to the real stuff that's, that, co- that might come from the underground. But um, I have my own thoughts about about music that you guys might be interested in. Are you yeah, familiar with? Yeah. Obviously, there's um, what's her what's her name? Lady Gaga and uh, Thirty Seconds yeah. to Mars. And yeah. uh, you look into some of the symbolism that they exhibit, and 
you, you can tell, like, if it's a George Orwell, I'm going to show you the, sin, the symbolism, but in a negative con, con, context where uh, I disagree with it. And then there's oh, yeah. the album where I'm going to show you the symbolism, but this is just a warning, a spit in your face, like this is what's coming and you can't do anything about it. I think that um, Lady Gaga and 30 Seconds to Mars, for example, they are totally on board of this New World Order movement. And uh, you can definitely listen their music. And you got to wonder if, um, if this David Icke philosophy of, of frequency and vibration, and so like what music means to people when they hear it, like mm -hmm. if if that's presumed to be true, or at least you're going to entertain the thought, what's to say that listening to Lady Gaga or listening to Thirty Seconds to Mars is not participation in some sort of worldwide occult devil worship? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Actually, you know what? Um, we had an interesting joke for you. Uh, you're not the grandson of Aleister Crowley by any chance, are you? <laughs> Um, I, I know he did come up with the backwards masking, uh, uh, technique for, uh, you know, putting subliminals into music, so that's interesting as well. But it's just an unfortunate coincidence because it distracts from my message. If it's related to that guy, I don't know about it. I'm yeah, sure yeah, no. Or anything. Um, but David Crowley, my act, lead actor's name is Danny He's a mason. That doesn't mean that I'm related to that guy. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, not at all. It, it's funny because the guest that we ha uh, had on yesterday was also last name Mason. He said the exact same thing. Uh, one thing that we were talking about too was the recently the uh, mission to Mars where they broadcasted the uh, the Will I Am song from the Mars rover. So that you know could possibly play into what you're saying about uh, frequency and music. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm not really familiar with it. I can barely keep up with the news. I can't even keep up with my emails. But, uh, I don't blame you. <laughs> just because there's no uh, public science that proves that, I'm not going to say that it doesn't exist because I don't understand it. I think that there's something to see and write. Why does music affect us the way it does? Why do we get into it? Why do we start bobbing our heads around? Why does it it's emotion physiologically, you know? Like, there's got to be something to it. And if these guys are obviously devil worshippers, whether there's a devil or not, they seem to believe there is. And so what's, who's to say that their music is not some sort of communal sort of participation in this in this mass devil worship? Oh, yeah, especially, absolutely. Especially when we get, like, uh, Madonna on stage for the Super Bowl or whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, um, when you go into the subliminals that they have, um, you know, that we all know that come with, from watching television um, where your, um, you know, your subconscious brain can pick up the subliminal frame, but it, it moves faster than the eye, you know, it, who's to say that there's not subliminals uh, inside, you know, audio subliminals inside of music? I mean, it, if they have it in, you know, uh, visuals, why wouldn't they have it in audio? You know, it seems to, it's like you could deduce it. In there. Uh, what you have to do is, uh, if you uh, actually had this idea for a spy movie once, uh, what you can do is you can record subliminals within, like an MP3, for example. You just have to, uh, you record music with like a, a whispered message or something, or maybe a beeped code or something, and you'll never hear it when you're listening to the MP3. But if you have a clean version of the MP3 and you and you subject to phase cancellation, you can mm -hmm. just simply cut out everything else and reveal the original message. I thought that'd be a sweet way to first, like, spies to communicate. I'm trying to... Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, that, that just says that you can put anything you want into music and your brain will pick up on it. The power of the subconscious is something no one can really understand at this point. Here, here, here's a random question for you. You just peeked me off with the, the spy idea. Have you ever heard of the, uh, the number code channels? where you have these strange uh, radio channels where they just seem to read like number after number and they kind of, I don't know if they popped up in the around the time of the Cold War and I guess they're still going now and just no one knows what they're for. They think that they're uh, uh, spy messages coded in numbers. Well, they, they say that if you're going to hide a letter, put it on the mantelpiece. Uh, I think that... <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Bye. No reason that it would be on the on the radio waves that we can just look at because uh, who's going to look into it? You yeah. know, and, and I were to think about it, who's going to listen to us? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think. Are you up with the next question, guys? Or? Yeah. I was, again, um, a little bit talking about music again, but you know, with the essential destruction of the music industry, you know, via piracy. 
and we're seeing that happening to movies as as well. Um, you know, how do you think that's going to um, set the course for the future of film with regarding how we will be making films in the future? Do you think it's going to be up to um, more people doing it um, independently like you guys are with Gross Day? I think there's definitely an expanding market for independent work in any field. But um, as far as, like, said the music through piracy, I, I disagree with that. If you guys are familiar with Adam Kokesh. He has this really interesting idea about um, intellectual copyrights or intellectual rights. Okay. I'm not I'm not educated on the matter enough to speak about it, but I'm, I'm kind of being swayed by it. Like, I tend to disagree with intellectual property, the idea of it. And I can't explain why. I have to get more research into it, but I encourage you guys to look into it because sure. it's just... No doubt. Definitely. Sorry, brother, we just lost that that last part. Oh, I just um, I encourage you guys to look into it yourself. All right. Because... Okay, thanks. Got that. Will do. Um, yeah, I mean, I personally come from more, you know, of a punk hardcore background. I mean, underground hip hop as well, and a lot of the um, bands just essentially make the, you know, the music for free. It's all like DIY and shared between people, um, and. I do, um, I think we, as you said, I think we are seeing more of a move towards, you know, independent artists and have been for a long time because obviously the, the big labels haven't got the power they once had or the control um, of the in, of the industry. Um, so I was just curious with, with that question. Um, you know, you're from Minnesota, as you said, and I know that's quite a, a vibrant area for music. There's a lot of drum and bass there. I know there's punk there as well, and there's some hip hop. Um, so I, I just um, wanted to widen that question a little bit with um, is there any local musicians or, or filmmakers that have caught your attention within your local um, scene or that you would like to shout out that you know people should be aware of? As far as local musicians or filmmakers, no, because I, I'm the new guy in town right now. Oh, yeah. uh, I just got out of the military. I just started school. I'm actually still in school. I'm taking 24 credits this quarter, and uh, Gray State has been my uh, my back burner effort. And if anything, I'm the new kid on the block that people are noticing. But um, as far as musicians, I'm not I'm not I'm not into the scene enough to have noticed. But I know that it's a like you said, it's a very vibrant scene. I know there's a lot going on. I'm just not plugged into that just yet. Absolutely, no doubt, no doubt. Um, have you got, you've got the next two up in your VX. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, a short while ago, this this crazy zeitgeist phenomenon kind of went viral viral on uh, YouTube and the internet. We we're just wondering, had you and Danny had a chance to see the zeitgeist documentary and what your opinions on it were as far as uh, from the aspect of filmmaking and as well as like how accurate the information was? Because there's a lot of debate about that. That's a good question. I wish I had seen it. I know all, I know about it. I know about Zeitgeist, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, what I understand is that it's um, what it does is it immediately captures the current um, social flavor, so to say, by scaring mm -hmm. you with more images of 9/11 and then pushing you towards a pre a predisposed uh, disposition about these things. Um, what I understand yeah, I is that <laughs> it does that only it kind of tells you to chill out and um, that uh, this new age sort of philosophy is where to go. But as I understand it, that's essentially Luciferianism. So they're training you to accept a new world order. Mm -hmm. Like that, that is the solution to that's, the, the world. That's actually a pretty accurate assessment for, uh, for somebody who hasn't seen it. And there's also quite a bit, uh, we do have this uh, question coming up later, and we could, we could ask you your thoughts on it, but uh, there's quite a bit about the Federal Reserve and uh, all of that. I know you guys just came back from the whole, uh, from Tampa with the whole Ron Paul stuff going on and stuff, so there's quite a bit uh, on the Federal Reserve. What, with the financial crisis, America, whatnot, what are your thoughts on the recession? And uh, would you and Danny and the, the crew of Gray State consider this to be uh, the tipping point, boiling point, so to speak? Um, you know, is there room to come back from this or is it going to be a decline from here on out? Uh, that's a layered question. Um, I think that the current recession is completely set up. I think the, the economy shows indication of trying to recover if it were left alone. I think it's intentionally imploded. And mm -hmm. as far as this being the tipping point, 
I think it's certainly a barometer that we can look at and say, like, now it's starting to affect us. You know, and, and I'm sorry to say that it's come to that. Sometimes, like, when I'm watching documentaries or I'm just observing the way things are going, I'm like, how pathetic are we that we waited this long to respond to this? That's like, oh, now, <laughs> yeah. now, now it's threatening our, our trips to Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So, uh, yeah, I think that we are a complacent species, and I readily embrace whatever, whatever change occurs because I think we totally deserve it. Oh, I, I totally agree with all that. I think uh, you're up with the next one, Kev? Yeah, um, I was just going to just put a point onto that. I, I agree. I think it's certainly been um, orchestrated um, by the powers that be to pretty much force us back into those plebs in a situation of medieval servitude, really. It's, um, I, know, I suppose I'm being bitter. Um, I finished school, David, and then we went into like a, pretty much a financial 9-11. And I was like, man, and just with all the... The levels of debt and you know every everything um, that they're, they're putting on people. I mean, the track of tuition fees here for people returning to uni—it's it's just crazy. So, um, with that being said, then with um, some of those points you just raised, then um, is this um, how is it affecting people in the film industry, particularly independent filmmakers? Um, you know, you, you've got this campaign going to try and get funding for great states or. Is it becoming harder for you guys to make film who are more from the independent market? <laughs> independent filmmakers have never had money, so this is nothing new. <laughs> we're we're yeah, making no. like anyone else. If anything, um, the, the current social barometer has made it easier for us because it makes our message that much more popular. It's, it's like Zeitgeist, it's doing its own efforts to um, kind of exemplify these ideas. And... Uh, I mean, currently, I couldn't have any better PR than uh, current events. You know, they're, they're proving my movie for me, and it's just been a, a tremendous help. So, if anything, I think I have it easier than any filmmakers, even during a, a, a good economy. Ooh. True. But, you know, I'm still struggling to get the money, and uh, it's been, you know, begging and pleading all the way. And it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be a lot of work to get the money to make this film. But that's nothing new. Well, you know, I sincerely hope you... Um do get the money and I, I want to say as well that um, send me absolutely um, any any material um, that can can help you guys whether it be um, you know flyers to post on the blog just with contact addresses um, you know information you know updates um, you're quite welcome to appear on this show again as well even if it's just for 10 minutes to do a, a quick update because um, films like this, and particularly someone who's wanting to present something that's saying, look, this is a powerful possibility that could happen, and as I've been stressing throughout the show, it's something different to all the commercialised crap that's being forced down people's throats. So we need a feature film like this to get on the cinema that can hopefully make people just, just think for a change. As you said, everyone, even some meathead who's just going there to watch you know, someone just blow shit up for the whole movie. Um, <laughs> So I, you know, I totally su support this. Um, VX, you um, had the uh, had another question, didn't you? Yes, sir. I uh, just wanted to uh, go kind of back to what we were saying about the whole uh, Ron Paul thing, because his movement kicked off a short while ago. I know you guys have got a lot of questions about this, but more just wondering about what you think about uh, the Fed Reserve. And there's, you know, there's a whole long section on in Zeitgeist about the Fed Reserve, and a lot of people are talking about it now. Um, as far as auditing the Fed Reserve, do you feel like that's any sort of solution or even to get rid of it altogether? Uh, would that really change anything or are things so far gone now that if they got rid of it at this point, they would just replace it with something else that's, that's the same thing? Well, we all know that history is cyclical and if we were to mm -hmm. buy it, some miracle, like let's say, let's say Ron Paul was elected tomorrow mm -hmm. and uh, he did everything he was going to say, that he said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. That's not a solution because it doesn't fix Humanity. Humanity is uh, a very striated creature, and left to our own devices, if we're comfortable, we're just going to slip back into the same cycles we have before. The, the cycle of tyranny will happen again, even if we win today. So I don't think that, I think that within the current paradigm, auditing the Fed, for example, is a very important exercise in correcting things, but it's still within that paradigm. 
I think humanity is ready for an evolutionary shift in thought. And I can't, I can't say what it's going to be, but uh, I might have the, um, the spiritual maturity to not invest in this reality enough to give a shit about the Federal Reserve. Because I know that something terrible is going to happen because the system is not correctable. What is that? If Ron Paul gets in and he audits the Fed, and all, all he'll do is he'll reveal that our money is worthless. Uh -huh. And that, that will cause his own problems. And then history, you might even remember Ron Paul's one who caused it. Uh -huh. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I don't think I think Ron Paul. I don't know if he ever planned to get elected, but I think that he injected the real issues to make mm -hmm. us understand these things. And but I think the solution is on a personal level. I don't think that participation in the paradigm, hoping. I mean, <laughs> the the, the, uh, the the what I like to say is that uh, no one enters a marriage expecting to change the other person, and if they do, they're in for a surprise. So if we're gonna, if we're gonna play the game of the system. I do not think that we can expect to change the system. So I don't think Ron Paul getting elected is a solution. I don't think that auditing the Fed is a solution. But then again, I, I could be happily wrong about that. And so, well, I don't know. I don't know. But either way, I think that we need to go back to um, a different way of thinking, a different way of viewing the world, moving away from a materialist sort of uh, like we exist to purchase and be a cog in the machine. I, I think that even if the Fed were audited, the current system of living, the current standard of living we expect, those things would persist. And I think those things are the real problems because they, they prevent us. And we're talking about the David Icke world, and that's like truth to some, and it's, it's bullshit to most people. Mm -hmm. But the reason it's bullshit is because their current experience does not reflect that as truth, not because they've proven it themselves. And so I think that our current, our, the, the way we exist in, in our world, our realities today, dictate what we believe and what we won't believe just as a matter of just making a decision about it like I choose not to believe this so it's not real and I think that any participation in the system would only perpetuate that that mode of thinking I think we need to progress beyond that definitely definitely um since you touched a bit on there of, of the the human consciousness uh, paradigm I'm just wondering have uh, I'm not gonna ask the generic is the world gonna end on December 21st 2012 my <laughs> question but have you and Danny looked into the Mayan calendar and the Olmec calendars and do you have any thoughts of you know what they say is the ending of the fifth age and could that be some sort of uh, paradigm shift in human consciousness with the galactic shifts and all that that we're supposed to see this year end of this year I, I can uh, I can elaborate on this, but it's going to be the same conspiracy theory stuff that anyone is going to talk about. And I'm, not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not an expert. I mean, I, I can okay. say things that you will nod your head and agree with because you've read the same stuff. That doesn't make yeah. it. That doesn't make it true. And I don't. I yeah. don't know. I mean, who knows? Who knows? According to, by all accounts, and this is not just um, this is not just Mayan. Uh, we're the uh, the film takes a heavy Lakota Indian influence. Mm -hmm. uh, the main character that Danny plays is half Lakota, and so we've been doing a lot of research on those ends. And That's they cool. have the same sort of creation myths. They have the same sort of cycle set up. It's not mm -hmm. just a bunch of random numbers. It's mm -hmm. not like they ran out of space on a calendar. They're, they're, they had knowledge about stellar cycles and uh, these patterns that occur every, you know, whatever, 65,000 years or, or something, and they knew about it. And they knew. And if they knew, what don't we know? Mm -hmm. We put all the even NASA, but who says that that they're so, on our side even? Sorry, let into that. I've got a quick question then um, with what you've said there. Um, we've asked this question actually to um, a few guests. Um, do you think then at some point um, in the near future, or oh, this could get into again um, the conspiracy side where they may have already found something where we're going to see some genuine archaeological evidence that cannot be refuted that is going to confirm um, and, and something um, you know relating to that um, or the cynic could argue again um, that if they do would they make that known to the public um, just wanted uh... the, the darker aspect of, of where we live today I think that there is more than enough evidence both within if you Google it, or if within my own experience, I have seen enough, and I have experienced enough, and I've read enough to prove that there is extraterrestrial life. But since it's not publicly recognized as scientific fact, you know, our new god, science, since yeah. our new god, science, is not acknowledged ETs, then they don't exist. And most people will much rather listen to that god than any other god. 
I think that if someone were to discover irrefutable evidence of like an alien buried in my backyard, I think they would be suppressed and silenced by the government, or worse, they would just be allowed to publish their findings, and that the public would simply not acknowledge it as fact. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. um, there, there. I think that if if it becomes if it comes to the point where we make first contact or something of that nature occurs where it is public and the president is shaking hands with an alien, I think that will be a highly choreographed and pre-planned event that is meant to generate some public response that is preordained. I would agree, I would agree. Do, do, you, think, do you think we're already maybe seen that then with with the amount of sci-fi movies that are released now because there's, there's absolutely loads and all of the um, you know sci-fi series. I mean, we've got the incredibly popular ancient alien um, TV show as well. So do you think then possibly? I know this is a bit conspiracy based, yeah, but maybe a bit of testing the public a bit for something like that. Here's a litmus test: Are those people still alive who released those videos? I mean, hmm. if you know, was it Philip Schneider? I think that's his name. He's dead. He was assassinated. Uh, Stanley Kubrick. He's dead because he made Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah, that is how you. That is how you gauge how close to truth it is. I think anything else is disinformation to some degree. Even William Cooper. I mean, he wasn't a filmmaker, but I'm sure maybe he would have got there <laughs> had he given them given the chance. You know. Yeah, that's another one. Those guys are dead. Yeah, yep. that's a good. That's good true. Yeah. That's a good. Do you point. have? Um, I wondered. Um, have you heard about the um? pyramids that have been, you know, actually sighted on Mars and VX. Could you, um, maybe, um, ask David about the, you know, that structure that was found, um, in in the Baltic, which they don't know what it is, that UFO? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, they found, like, that, uh, UFO shape there. Now they're saying it's a, it's a rock or some sort of lava rock that was, uh, before the Ice Age in the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Uh, they've been excavating that for some time. It's made some, some mainstream news. Uh, have you heard about that at all? The one that looks like the Millennium Falcon? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty that's much. Everyone knows it now. It's like, hey, you've seen the Millennium Falcon thing? Like, what if we never had Star Wars? We wouldn't have that reference. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have heard about that, and I have heard about the Martian pyramids, and I have heard about the pyramids that are buried in Mexico that are bigger than the ones at Giza. I, I mean, there are, there are pyramids all over the world. Oh, yeah. Supposedly, they found one, uh, uh, the Bermuda Triangle, which maybe they think is somehow related to Atlantis. Uh, I'm finding a lot of stuff with Google Earth and the whole X-ray stuff and things like that. Um, oh, man, it's it's election season, so we're coming up on November 6th. Uh, it's fairly obvious that none of us three think that either of the major parties would be worth the vote. But I do want to say that uh, a film that I'm a huge fanboy of, They Live, is coming out on Blu-ray on Election Day. Uh, have you seen John Carpenter's They Live at all, David? I haven't heard of that. You, you should check that out. It's uh, it's 1988. It deals with this uh, extraterrestrial invasion. And uh, even if you just, there's this one really famous scene where Rowdy Roddy Piper from the WWF is the main character. He gets these sunglasses, and when he puts them on, you can see who's human and who's not. And he also looks at all the billboards and inside of magazines, and uh, he can see all the subliminals behind the billboards and the magazines. So it's uh, no, 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 no. someone just told me about this film. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should definitely yeah. check this out, or at the very least, uh, just try to YouTube that scene because it's it's great. It's an awesome film from '88. Yeah, I wrote it down. I'll check it out for sure. Absolutely. It's, um, it's, it's also worth watching, I'm going to add it, because it's got one of the most epic um, fight scenes going, Keith, as it, I think. <laughs> Roddy Aitman must go on for about 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they recreated it on South Park with the, uh, with the cripple fight. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amanda Eloquence has a uh, question for you, David. Uh, my friend for PXR here. I'm not exactly sure of this, but he says, have you ever heard of the Oath Keepers or the Free State Project, and what do you think about them? I think, well, first of all, uh, when I was down in Tampa, I stayed in the same house as Stuart Rhodes. I participated in two roundtable discussions with Stuart Rhodes, who founded Oath Keepers. Wow. And yeah, um, that Tuesday, I was in a conference call with their board of directors, and um, actually Mitch and I are going to be shooting a lot of material for their flagship video. And that will include, um, if, you, if you guys are familiar with the, uh, those MTV shorts or those, uh, those PSAs that MTV released about like people being taken out of their houses and put on trucks and then it, the, the frame freezes and it's, a, it's something from uh, 1930s Germany or something. Have you guys seen those? 
I haven't, no. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I don't believe I have. Uh, go on YouTube and Google the, uh, or search for the uh, the MTV uh, Holocaust MTV. video. Anyway, Stuart MTV. wants to make some more of those. I think uh, Stuart's, man, <laughs> Stuart is something else. I just, uh, I, I filmed his speech at, at Paul Fest and I put it up on my YouTube channel. But that guy has like the same intensity, intensity and sense of urgency that I have. And like, he doesn't, he doesn't have any faith in the system. And he thinks like it's time to warn the police and military, educate them about their oaths because they're the ones holding the guns. And it's an extremely important endeavor to wake those people up before it's too late. And they start um, uh, imposing martial law on the, on the American population. Both is uh, they are they are on it. That is that is an organization that you should look into and definitely pass along to your military friends. But yeah, we're in with Stuart pretty tight, and uh, we're gonna be working with him closely in the future. That's sweet. Uh, since you brought up the that whole police situation, there, I just wanted to mention: did, did you hear about that thing up in Michigan there with the the homeless guy that had the knife, and they had like the five or six cops that shot him like something like 26, 30 times in like six seconds. And, you know, they got it on film and whatnot. A lot of people are saying it was a, a bit of a display of uh, just, you know, just not a situation where that was necessary at all. They just basically overreacted. Did you hear about that at all? You know, I think I did. I think I saw that video, but I'm confused because there are so many of those videos coming out these days. Yeah, Everyone's that's like, true. I think, I think it's irrelevant to say that he was shot X amount of times because if he's shot once, you know, police don't shoot to, to injure you. They don't shoot to yeah. incapacitate they shoot to kill, so if they shoot you once and you're dead, it doesn't matter if they shot you 50 times. Mm -hmm. Very so uh, I think it, it's an overall representation of an aggressive police force. I think um, a lot of, as the older generations of police are phased out and replaced by current, you know, raised on TV, raised on Xbox, went and joined the army, went to Iraq, come back, and now they're in the police force and they're treating American citizens like Iraqis. I think that's what we have to worry about, and I think that a trigger happy policeman is definitely one of those as opposed to an older guy who knows that the american people are your something you're supposed to protect not you know bully but i think that there there i don't take the side against the police i think the trends are going away from our favor but every incident has its has its uh you, you can't uh what is it called uh quarterback yeah what's it called man armchair quarterback all of their decisions because you saw a video, you know. So maybe they were justified if they had rushed. I mean, there are different, there are other options that you could pursue instead of shooting the guy to death. But I, I think there are way too many of these shootings to ignore the trends. Definitely. You guys still have? Sorry, that was a little bit wandering. I to my thoughts a little. No, bit. no, no, no. It's all, it's all cool. De definitely. Um. um Yes, do you want to take a, a music break for a second, or uh, what, what do you guys think? You want to? Yeah, schedule? I'm gonna to try to get some questions for David in uh, the chat. Yeah, me too. Uh, I mean, I've still got one or two more, but if if it's still with you, David, we could just spin a track or two, and uh, you know, we can maybe just get a quick, uh, um, you know, drink for some refreshment, and then come back after a track if that's okay. Yeah, take a break. I'll see you guys in like two minutes. I'm right. Okay. Definitely. Peace out, man. Track. Okay, guys, we're going to get into um, Order Up Cho, which is a track by Gorilla Alliance. It features Ken Ibis, um, DJ Tonespliff, and features my good brother VX here, and also my brother um, Mac, who's in the PXR chat. Big up to Mac, big up to L, and we'll be back in about um, five minutes. Um, if anyone's got any questions, um, then please pop them in the PXR chat, or you can email me at inequilibriumdiy at gmail.com, or if you're on Tracebook, um, simply shoot me a message, and we can put those um, cues to David. So, peace out for now, and see you guys in a couple of minutes. Good stuff. Introduce a little anarchy. Upset the established order, and everything becomes chaos. I'm an agent of chaos. Oh, and you know the thing about chaos? It's fear. Yeah. Gorilla Alliance, Vega X, what's the science? We're all cannabis, these haters can't handle this. Be 
gypsies decreasing my mass and new speak has been given over two decades this prison plan is presented the soul of season filling in the new world of perfection and reformation remove the suffixes that's the type of shit i rip out of nations so many factions of pessimism magnetism towards fools you got the rich and blind leave the book and blind with snake tools you got the overly egotistical they claim to spit wicked you got the fake hip hop embodiments been pointing the ticket and plus you got the best that's supposed to teach but rather damage because the careers on life support and real spitters take advantage they subject matters duplicated on spot they think wave the white flag and say we all under hip hop but they ain't hip hop but it's always prostitutes that got lucky the legacy of dick sucking made the sound disgusting and ugly which starts a fusion of belligerents and renegade rhymers like GA with the jack and leave these punks on the timer the project is at war but these hard rocks make me laugh being proud of inevitable internment for years got them gas when I tell the homies the problems beyond their point of view which we've been cursed since constructed propaganda of this news and men and women the forced to reality embracing trace book becoming AI maturing candidates life got them shook they rather dream as winners than they live life as cowards yet they're void of emptiness breast cancer is in the bowels my mind stay touches both worlds a grimness and hope thinking with microphone dog fights thoughts number than coke these cats can worship idols like Zionist Canaanites I grab Eli's machete stuffing mice surrounding the pit Fight, colder than terrific your weapons in the martial wasteland A mass effect of war and violence that inhabits this land The attack we thought is the spiritual world is in ruins Order our kill, they can't strike the righteous, we're moving The lips are sealed in the battlefield Hey, there's no diss in the single with a formula of PXR tone split, rip it to Mingo. This is for all my hometown hero, hater, clone, enemies. Get disposed with my vocal energy or go choke on your own jealousy. There's no test to me, you broke petty geeks. I palm heaters, melt mites until my palms bleeding. Drop schemes to leave your squad to ether. These parasites can't tear the mic. Me and Max snipe them with a pair of sights. The mind power to rhyme for hours, but no time to argue about hip hop with spineless cowards. It's VX and the sand from pesting cannabis. The conspiracy we speak of is clearly deeper. They can't touch these bars, bis. When Jermaine explains his rage, I relate to the same struggle as an artist. Gorilla Lion, PXR combined, spit science. No liar can decipher this empire. I flow frequently, so my seven chakras stay above the Illuminati's low frequencies, exposing the meetings they hold in secrecy. We got props from a legend for dropping the message. Guess that's why you all got envious. Everything is connected. What you put out, you get back. So don't be surprised at your afterlife setback. Fish shatter your iris, tactical violence. My notebook's coded in math from the Mayans. With raps that spell the 2012 galactic alignment. The, the, the lips are sealed in the battlefield. In America, hearts and minds start to backslide in the sorcery. Now we're being attacked from all sides. How tall is a guy? Taller than satellite eyes in the sky. Printing high resolution, stand by. Fucking with this rap shit. Insurance policies must be active, especially if your spouse is unattractive. Stop. It ain't no such thing as right as block. Look at all these motherfucking biters going pop. You sound like somebody else. I said stop. You'll be dead by design by the time the album drops. You spend all this time trying to put an album out. And nobody gives a fuck what that album is about. Dude, don't you dare answer me with your mouth. If hip hop was my house, why well, I gotta get out? I've been out. The stone, the scroll, the drum beat, the flow. Your money machine drum rolls. My rifle unfolds. Stories untold. As if the Hindenburg omen would only affect one soul on this globe. Cannot be taken. It must be given or bestowed. Radio show, freestyle, go. Rip shows. If the heart desires nothing, you would not experience suffering. The crying, the cussing, the red eyes, the rubbing. You were not in control. You were just a puppet or muppet. Which was it? Yes, let's change the subject. Muscles expand, rip through pants. Drop kick.
Thinking niggas trying to take motorcycle trips to France Siberian werewolf, drinking smear off Listen to be the toss, vampire don't you dare talk They walk, they time talk, show hope, start fans in the dark Large fangs, must be sniping for a walk Kirk Jones sitting in court, trying to gather his thoughts He battled niggas in the tunnel in New York I saw it, I was there, I applauded It was 4.34 in the morning I just witnessed history, I was on and I was tired of performing Inspired by the hip-hop audience, Elo Elo talks to us Can I bust, pacing and leading, writing and reading All knowledge is increasing, the unknown is receding The earth is teeming with light, we streaming on the mic Real up seas to my left, so produce to my right I'm in charge of this class. I'm the warrior chief. I'm the merciless god of anything that stirs in my universe. You fuck with me, and you will suffer my wrath. future my mother warned me about and in this future I don't know if we can win this war yo yo what up everybody this is resistance and Vega X we're live with David Crowley the director of Grey State GreyStateMovie.com hope everybody is enjoying the show um, I think we had a question from um, Mac for you, David, and he's asked, um, "Do you have any past work or short films available to view?" Actually, yeah, um, I run a production company called Hothead Productions, and uh, you know we're still pretty new because my partner Mitch and I were actually still in school, so we are new enough that we haven't done any real credible work that you find on IMDb. But there's a lot of fun projects that we've done uh, that are that are available on our Hothead Productions channel on YouTube also on uh, on Vimeo but uh, we, we do uh, 
we do production production work like videography, photography, website design, and we also run a military prop rental company and actor training program. So uh, all the weapon work and the weapons that you see in the Gray State film in the trailer, they're uh, they're provided by us, and all the actors are trained by us. And uh, if we have a we have a bullet exchange channel. Is what, that's what it's called. It's called the Bullet Exchange. If you go to YouTube and start and type Bullet Exchange, you'll see a lot of our other work as well. Uh, we have some pretty some pretty fun stuff on there. But that represents most of our work currently. Cool. Um, I just wondered if is there any other um, type of movies that you know you would like to make? Um, you know, hopefully after Grey State. Um, you know anything at all that you've you've always thought? Well, yeah, I really would like to make a movie around this subject, or maybe do um, something that hasn't maybe been done on on this angle, or anything like that at all. Well, Grace State's a pretty harsh mistress, and she's demanded most mm-hmm. of my attention for about two years so far. And I do know mm-hmm. that uh, in addition to the Grace State feature film, there is going to be Grace State number two. <laughs> and uh, without going into too much detail, it is um, directly related to Grace State number one. When you watch Grey State, you're going to see like the surface level conflicts that represent that, uh, that come from the trends that we're observing, like the Federal Reserve and all this stuff. Those will create very real physical conflicts immediately in our in our surroundings. But there is a spiritual battle that's going on in the subtext. And while Grey State kind of mentions it, it's really going to pay off in movie number two. So uh, if I get my way and I can make Grey State one and Grey State two, that's going to be a five to ten year effort, maybe. So uh, I haven't really thought about anything else yet. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Awesome stuff. Um, anything you want to um, ask VX? What have we got here? No, we haven't got VX. Um, again, if anyone's got any questions, just pop them in the chat. Uh, hey, um, you got me now, mate? All right, you there, brother. Yeah, we've got hey, you. Sorry about that, guys. Had, had my beard okay. on, you can see what a genius I am. Uh, he really <laughs> keeps my interest with the mention of, of the sequel there. Um <laughs> You know, if you were able able to get everything the way you want it, uh, could you possibly see something of like maybe maybe a trilogy, or is that too far along? Or are you just thinking I'm trying to get out one, and if that works out, I'll, I'll do a sequel? Well, it's a misnomer to call it a sequel. It's actually an, an integral part of the story. Okay. Uh, hinting at the David Icke universe, uh, multi-dimensional time does not matter. It's all irrelevant. It's all perceptual. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Grey sure. State exists in that world. So it, it gets this complicated, you know. You should you should see my living room wall, um, just, <laughs> and uh, emotional through lines and connecting to all the stuff. And it's like forty feet of this, like scenes and interconnecting with sequences and like this overall rising and falling action. I have to plan it out very specifically. That's but in addition, to that, like it goes on this this time shift. Like there's the gray state world, which which will function on its own, but it totally ends in a cliffhanger. And then you're gonna wait for gray state number two. And that's going to go ahead and start back before Gray State even starts, and you're going to you're going to get to know uh, Danny Mason's character a little bit better. Cool, that, that's sweet. And I saw something hilarious, you guys. Uh, not to cut you off, but I saw something hilarious. Get to know uh, the character of Danny. Uh, really cool. You're going to see these scenes. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I just saw something hilarious you guys posted uh, on, on Facebook uh, and via Twitter about uh, some of the uh, genius Facebookers and YouTubers have actually figured out that you guys are being funded by the CIA, and you guys kind of roasted them for that, that uh, jumping <laughs> exclusions a little bit. <laughs> so busted. <laughs> it, it, it was too funny for me not to speak on it, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually happy that, we're, uh, that the trailer's been released. Because for the past year we've been running the Facebook page, and we've been having to like to say all these cryptic things and really dark things and post current event things, and, uh, <laughs> able to out, like personally yet. And I'm finally able to like talk about you know we're making a film. This is all film, right. <laughs> and I'm able to say those mm. things. Definitely. Definitely. Did you have a question there from from L in the chat VX? Yeah, let me uh, pull that one up. It's a, it's a bit of a multi-layered question. Uh, it's from my buddy Eloquence from uh, one of my groups here uh, at PXR. Do you think that the Oath Keepers can halt the manifestation of Grey State? What about art, music, and film, etc.? Can this create a way of thinking to stop the New World Order from implementing the final solution uh, of complete world domination? Do I think that the Oath Keepers can 
succeed. Absolutely. I think they can. Do I think they will? I don't really know. I think that that's what that's what Grace State is. I mean, as a mm -hmm. filmmaker, I don't have to conclusively answer that question based on my research because that's irrelevant anyway. What I can do is explore a, a consequence of them not succeeding. So hopefully, hopefully, I can help them out by like giving them a vehicle that they can show people like, oh, hey, this is what'll happen if we fail. By the way. Yeah, yeah. Let's not do this. <laughs> no, let's not do this. <laughs> no, let's been some other well, questions right now. Have you got anything to ask? Yeah, there was one question we did ask earlier, and I know it's a generic one, but um, it's, you know, we can, um, we asked you um, earlier on on the show, um, you know, what was the most uh, original screenplay that, you know, you've seen, or possibly you think there has been in history, and I think that was the one you said you needed some time to think about it, so I just wondered, um, is there any um, favourite pieces of film that, that you could put in a top five that, that stand out there that say yes this is you know landmark groundbreaking um, piece of film um, that really just set the, the benchmark oh man there, there's a lot of them and I haven't been able to think about it to come up with the, like that killer answer that you're looking for but um, no, no worries because I don't really go to the theaters and watch movies anymore I just don't like the experience and uh, I, I kind of miss out on a lot of the cool new stories coming out but um, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, uh, Inception, I thought, was pretty original. I'm not saying it was awesome, because it was way over the top complicated, and it didn't do a very good job of controlling the audience's emotion, because it was like tension, 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 tension the whole time. Mm -hmm. But I would say that he definitely figured out the mechanics of his universe, and as I'm going through creating the, the universe of Greystate, I can definitely appreciate that, because it's not about whether the movie is realistic, but about will it play by its own rules, and Inception, I think, definitely did that. I, I found very few problems with the universe created by Inception, but that's probably a poor example, because, you know, you want the, uh, the artistic example, you want, you want something better. It's, no, no, I, I thought it, that was no, good. good. Inception, yeah. I thought, was badass. Um, a bit of a follow-up, then. It, not necessarily most original or anything like that. Do you have a, a favorite film? Just, you know, whatever you think is the most entertaining. No, it doesn't have to be overly technical, just whatever. I like Children of Men. I also okay. like anything by the Coen brothers. Yep. Just because they, they, what, what they do, I think, is they create a very specific flavor from a time and a place in history. And I, no matter what it is, I just, I just like experiencing their films. Even if, like, well, uh, yeah, I, I just really enjoy the Coen Brothers. But um, as far as a favorite oh. film, I like Children of Men. I like V for Vendetta. I think because yep. as you can tell, they kind of uh, they kind of follow my line of thinking for the world. Yep. Definitely, but, definitely. Uh, I, I like movies that um, make me feel a certain way about something. I mean, a, a well-told story is going to make you feel something without you know bashing you over the head over the head of the idea. And I think Coen Brothers do a good job of that. Absolutely, I've got I totally agree. I've got to ask you this one then as well. It's um, it's a very popular movie that a lot of people do enjoy, and I, I think it's a great film as well. Um, you know, do you do you in, do you rank on um, the Shaw Shawshank Redemption as one of the great movies that's been made? Yeah, that's definitely a great movie. Um, I mean, any any movie you're going to talk about will follow one of like say 12 different storylines there's revenge there's redemption and you know of course redemption you get to see a character redeem i mean the, most stories will fall into these categories so it's very hard for me to figure out like which which story did a good job because if, if a film makes it to the screen that means that it, it played by the rules and it followed the structure and it did what it was supposed to do if you're going to really get down into its primary theme did the movie communicate well well, most movies do. Most movies do a great job of communicating the theme. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should get back to a bad movie, especially movies that make the most money at the box office, like Transformers, for example. But those movies are still a hell of a lot of fun to watch. I had I have a lot of fun watching the original Transformers, or the first one from 2007, even though it's a terrible movie. You know, <laughs> entertainment and quality storytelling. I think Shawshank is a extremely well-told story. Uh, how about stuff like this is kind of random but it, we've kind of alluded to it the whole time with what we've been talking about um, what about films that actually um, deal with the whole uh, you know artifacts from conspiracy theories such as uh, the Indiana Jones trilogy where you have like the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant stuff like that 
Um, what, what about those kinds of films that, you know, even even the, the last Indiana Jones, it had, you know, okay, it wasn't a great movie by any means, but it had, you know, the big extraterrestrial twist at the end. Uh, how about stuff like that? I think uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark is a fantastic film. I think its its content is more or less irrelevant. I think that just adds a flavor to it. Mm -hmm. um, totally. I don't think it adds toward the existence of an actual Ark of the Covenant, because that's not the point of the film. What you're doing is you're watching you beat some ass and uh, go from place to place. Yeah. That's, that's a good film. And of course, you have those iconic moments, like where he shoots the uh, the swordsman. And, and, yeah, classic. Uh, the fun movie, what the material is about. And Grey State is kind of like that, in that you're, you're going to some interesting flavors, but that's not what the, the film is about. Um, other yeah. things like, but what, like the National Treasure movie? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. We'll never it, but I think that's what you're getting at is like, how much of that is supposed to be, uh, is supposed to add to the layered uh, impression on the, uh, the the viewing audience's subconscious as far yeah, as like. Absolutely. Real. Absolutely. Yeah. I, um, I, 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 definitely for those films that is laced with enough misinformation and Hollywood spectacle that you're going to see it, you're going to understand it, and then you're going to shuff, shuffle it off to the sidelines and not pay attention to it anymore, especially when it starts to come out like, hey, wait, maybe uh, maybe this is a real thing. Well, no, it's not, because I saw that movie with Tom Hanks once. Yeah, I think yeah. It's just misinformation, so you stop paying attention. I've got a... Um... I've got a question for you actually again it's um it's an obvious one i guess but you're obviously you know you're a filmmaker so i've got to ask this um who who are your favorite um actors and actresses um is there anyone around now who particularly um catches your attention or or are they actors from you know back in the days of like hitchcock and then maybe some more old school actors that you think you know they're a lot better definitely stand out i definitely like um older older actresses not necessarily older actors like you're talking about like okay. Hitchcock those people yeah, I just didn't anyone. the film scene from the theater scenes so that's why you see them overreacting that's why those old action movies when people get shot they throw their hands up into the air and then fall great <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally totally but I, I still enjoy their performance I guess because mm -hmm. these days it's all realism like you're, if you're asking like favorite actor like who gets the, who gets the, um, I don't know I think there's a lot of really quality candidates out there I think that from Avatar what's his name but he, oh uh, the, all the dude from Terminator 4 or? yeah he's in he's Clash of the Titans as well yeah Sam Sam Worthington is it yeah exactly. I, I mean what what happens is he, he emerges with a very valuable skill set first of all he's uh, physically attractive he's um, he can build a weapon and he can, you know, throw a sword around. So let's put him on all these movies and make a bunch of money. Um, yep. I, I think he's a terrible actor. I think there are a lot of other quality actors who can get that realism. Like, like Tom Cruise is another bad example because I think he's a douchebag, but he can really. <laughs> <laughs> We're in agreement there. <laughs> yeah. Watch Collateral. Yep. Amazing, amazing gun in that movie. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, Train, train really hard. Um, real quick, since you mentioned gunplay there, there could we uh could we assume you're a fan of the John Woo Hong Kong uh, action? Uh, no, you may not assume that. I hate John Woo. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I guess you cannot. Difference. We, um, thou shalt not assume. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, well, I'm, I'm, sorry, going to. John Woo is is ballet with bullets and. Uh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> hey, better seen people shot, and I know, like, if I'm going to yeah. communicate, if I'm going to tell a story, and I'm going to use violence to, to communicate a certain message within the story, I'm not going to sell it out and like, okay, now this scene has to culminate in a big flowery explosion that doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> yeah, that definitely happened. <laughs> well, I've, okay then. Um, one of my least favorite actors is um, Nicholas Phil. Um, you know. <laughs> Um, what, what do you think of Nicholas Phil? I mean, Nicholas Cage. Because to me, he just seems to look at the money and not the, not the scripts. Of, you know, most of his films post um, The Rock, I could say, have been utterly horrendous. Yeah. Nicholas Cage, uh, yeah. he's one of the most wooden actors I've ever seen, but I really do enjoy <laughs> adaptation. 
You guys still have me? Still have me. Yeah, 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 we still we got can. you. We just lost you there for a minute. You got you. Uh, you cut up a little bit, man. We, we didn't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about Adaptation, the movie with Nick. Oh, Blade. that movie's great. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. I have seen that movie. That's a great movie. Yeah, I think he was good in that one. And I actually was. Yeah, part two in The Rock. That's all he was. But uh, they wanted to keep him at, at arm's length, I think. And you know that, okay, you're going to see a Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> then I, I think he might be enjoyable. Yeah, yeah I, I would agree what, with that. What do you think of, then, um, Liam Neeson and... The Taken movies. Oh, that stuff had pretty solid gunplay. I think it's a little bit unrealistic yeah. in that you yeah. just fight, 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 fight all the time and you never take a <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think Taken was pretty solid. I didn't. I, I didn't think it was a good story because there was no story. It was just ass kicking the whole time. But you know, yeah. sometimes <laughs> sometimes you need that. I don't really like Liam Neeson. I, don't, I just don't like his look or his sound. But I think he's a quality actor. I guess. Here, here's one for you since we mentioned uh like you know the whole ancient aliens uh history channel tv show what about uh films that deal with that theme such as like stargate have you seen that or uh the abyss by james cameron or you know there, there's a lot of those in the 80s and the 90s uh, sci-fi did you have a chance to see any of those at all yeah that was um what's the quest i mean like those movies are around like what are they trying to say uh, yeah, I mean, do you think, uh, you know, those directors are trying to uh, wake up the audience and let them know that they should be conscious of the ancient astronaut theory, or is it just cinema? Is it just entertainment? I don't know. There, there's a fine line. This, this goes back to, uh, okay, there's a lot of terrifying shit going on in the world. Alex Jones would have you believe that there are people there who are trying to do it, and it's all intentional, and that you should be afraid of them. As mm -hmm. a say that it's just a general digression. It's just a tr trends of stupidity manifesting in like this kind of a de-evolution of mankind. I think there's equal credibility to both. I think um, people are very creative, and I could come up with a Stargate movie without having known about ancient astronaut theory, you know. So I, I think it could be accidental, or it could not be. I don't think it's entirely important. Stargate. Water, these secret subterranean cities, and this is kind of. Like, I, think the way. I think you could argue that maybe we're supposed to make those movies, introduced with ideas, or it's just making people. You know, I, I'm not really gonna. Ask we still got you, David. Um, I think we're getting a bit of a delay. I oh, lost that. Bummer. Yeah, yeah, we broke up a little bit on that one, Dave. Where did we at? Yeah, we still... still got... Yeah, we're, we're kind of cutting out a little bit here. I th what about if we take a quick track break Let's and then we we try and um, get this back going? So, um, we'll get on some LCOB with Martial Law featuring Razzle Allah and we will be back at
yo, what up guys, um, big ups to everybody, this is Planet Resistance Radio with me, Rez and VX, We're live with David Crowley, the director of Grey State, or greystatemovie.com, please check that out. Um, we just had some LCOB with Martial Law featuring Rizola La, I know we've got some questions from Mackinell which we will uh, get to um, in a moment, but um, you had a a question didn't you VX which um, David was in the middle of answering so could you just um, put that to David again and we can get back into that yeah we uh, we kind of lost him a bit there uh, his, yeah. his, his answer got broken up did you, uh, do you remember what you wanted to uh, hit on again Dave or I think it was about um, like the abyss and those old 80s sci-fi movies and uh, what was it, uh, it yeah. was Stargate and stuff like that yeah yeah and, uh, whether or not they are trying to uh, instill something into our collective consciousness about these ideas like ancient alien theory and uh, the creation myths and things, or if they're just sci-fi movies. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to answer conclusively either way because I think there's significant evidence that points in either direction. Because, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really necessarily want to believe that there are directors who get promoted and then there's like some secret meeting where uh, they turn off the lights and they say hey listen this is what you're going to make a movie about mm -hmm. or if, if those movies are simply promoted quietly and allowed to <laughs> just make it success commercially successful just so we can see them and all of a sudden when we uh when we hear about ancient alien theory then we think about the abyss and whatever and then we think, oh, well, that's not real. I really don't know one way or the other. It could just be accidental that these movies are made and that they're successful. Or it could be an insidious plot by the New World Order to make us all think a certain way. I think, I don't know, it could go either way. That's, that's definitely true. Um, question from my homie, McAveen, from my uh, my group, Guerrilla Alliance, here. He's actually the uh, vice president here at Planet X Records. Uh, he said, obviously, once Gray State is made and viewed, you will hear people that appreciate it and others that will reject it just based off the content alone. Uh, what would you answer to people's not well thought out criticism? <laughs> he said. <laughs> uh, that's a really great answer on a different show earlier last week. And, uh, man, I wish I could say that, that answer again. But um, we knew that we have a very polarized response to the trailer, and that has been the case. 97% of people like it, and they think man, finally someone's making this film because it exemplifies everything that's happening today. The other 3% are like, hey, man, you guys get out your tinfoil hats. Oh, libertarians know how to operate cameras now. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Totally. What they say because it's about, it, it's got conspiracy theory material in it. That uh -huh. just tells them that we're doing a good job attacking their reality because if it makes them that yeah. uncomfortable, they have to criticize something online be a tough guy and actually type out some poorly formulated argument about that to a stranger in order to yeah. prove a point. Well, then, and it's not even about the film. You know, you're not saying, hey, no. uh, your full effects were bad or I'm tired yeah. of your, you know, it wasn't a real critique. It was just, I don't think this is going to be a good movie because, or not even that. They, they say, I'm not going to watch this movie because I don't think it could be real. And the, 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 the example I like to give is like, did they think that way when they saw Toy Story or Jurassic Park? <laughs> yeah. hmm. Toy Soldiers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this, this can't, wait, wait, toys don't talk. This movie's horse shit. I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Look at that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think a term one of our metal boys that was on the show recently used was keyboard cowboys, and it just rang through <laughs> in every sense of the word. I have a question. Sorry, go on, Dave. Yeah, the, the second you put yourself out there, you're subject to the criticism from the widest array of people you can imagine. I'm sure you be criticized Absolutely. all of what you're doing. And um, if you have to get accused of being co-intel pro or something, then you're not doing it right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we had a question from um, our brother, L.A. Quentz, um, also of PXR. And... I know you've been in the military yourself, and he's put. He wants to know, um, you know, how aware are people in the military of the new world order? Um, it's been several years since I've been out. I got out in 2009. I have to say that it wasn't very hopeful back then, but things have definitely changed since then. I really don't know. I can only be hopeful that uh, people are aware of what they're doing. I have to say, um, the people I talk to, largely, it's a. Uh, Looking very good. Okay. Um, okay cool. That kind of that kind of fired me up with a little something something here, guys. Uh, 
I know in the in the description it said that you know were the uh, events to take place that are depicted in Grey State, which call it economic collapse or whatever, um, that there would be mass defections in the military. It, it looks like Danny's character is, is possibly uh, maybe doing that. You don't have to give away too much of the plot, but um, is that something you guys are going to uh, try to depict in the film as the military defections due to the oh, collapse? I'm not going to take the stance that all military and all police are just going to follow orders because they're robots. That's not something mm -hmm. I'm going to say. There is going to be absolutely mass defections, but will it be enough? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Also, it poses the, uh, the idea that maybe it won't matter because maybe Alex Jones is right in that there are UN soldiers, Russian troops, uh, Mexican soldiers even, who are being trained now to carry out, carry out those orders. So I, I really, I don't know conclusively what's going to happen, but great. Right explore that where you have like the um, the national staff sergeant who starts to question his orders and he gets his squad leaders together and he's like hey guys we're not going to go along with this and they start participating in the militias in the, in the underground resistance and then you can see how that all turns out it definitely I mean it draws the lines for sure but I mean you gotta wonder like where are the lines who's the bad guy mm -hmm. if, it's, if, if I'm a soldier and I'm shooting at civilians and they're not the bad guy and I'm questioning my orders and I'm not the bad guy who is the bad guy and it just mm -hmm. it, goes up that chain for sure oh yeah that's dope man i uh, cannot wait to see it man the concept tra uh, trailer looks absolutely awesome i can see there's what it's damn near what 250k uh hits on youtube so that's that's pretty crazy in itself yeah it actually got to 150,000 its first week just by going viral on facebook hell yeah that's uh, that's what i'm talking about my man if there were just more trailers like that, I mean, we, we could all agree that Hollywood is just not at its best right now, so I think indie indie films are going to be where it's at probably for some time, if not for the foreseeable future. <laughs> well, I think if the filmmaker's got a solid idea and achieve it, then anyone is capable of making a film like this. I think people have not really, like, I'm talking to local filmmakers now, they haven't really capitalized on, like, hey, let's, instead of just cranking out films, let's come up with a film that we care about and make it right. And then, mm -hmm work on great say for two years and it's not even approaching production yet and we've had more fans more publicity than any other local film that's been like even completed feature films that have like big name actors in them they don't have publicity oh yeah I mean, it's, it's all about original content these days and like we said it's yeah. everywhere it's not just film it's music too yeah exactly do you know I have, I have a feeling guys that if this film um, hopefully on the theatres, I have a feeling that um, people will be really receptive towards this because I do think that there's many of us out there that are getting frustrated and constantly sick and irritated by all this, you know, commercial garbage that we're being thrown thrown at us all the time, both in music and film. So I think it would do really well, and it would be something that it would get everybody talking. Which is one of you know the key aims in, in any music or film. Um, if you can get people talking about that, um, generating discussion, and saying, "Hey, what about that scene?" or "What about this um, concept that was put forward?" Um, I think that would be awesome. So uh, I'm I'm not just saying this because you know I it, it's personally interesting to me um, regarding some of the issues it it, it states, but I do think. Um, that it will be such a refreshing piece of, of film to appear at the theatres that um, people will be grateful for that. Um, I think it will do really well and be um, known as one of those films like, hey, that was truly something different and there should be more of that. Um, that's my personal view. Um, you know, how, how, how do you um, see a VX on that? Um, I totally agree. I mean, it's kind of like a little bit, you know, when I when I saw Scanner Darkly, you know, that was dope. I mean, I was already, you know, familiar with the author and familiar with all, all the other uh, films that have been made of his stories. But uh, it was it was kind of like a similar time then, you know, a lot more things were starting to come out in the news, just like the way they promoted Grey State. And then, you know, a lot of this paranoia of the 1984 or Orwellian police state. Um, and then as Scanner Darkly came out, it was like, you know, it seemed like, oh, man, this is dope. There's going to be a whole much a whole bunch more stuff like that it's going to set a new trend and then there really wasn't and and nothing really happened it all kind of died off and then now we're getting gray state so it's like it's, it's kind of like it's coming back you know 
Well, you guys are talking about the responsibility of artists to represent faithfully their surroundings and uh, mm -hmm. really communicate the truths of like, what is the social climate right now and how can I best communicate that? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the successful art because that best represents the people. The best art mm -hmm. is not found in theaters right now. Transformers, Spider-Man, yeah. come on. <laughs> those things are just distractions. But I yeah. think um, even, even if Scanner Darkly and those, those films didn't uh, you know, cause a mass awakening or whatever, they're still your prime examples of this, am I right? So they, yeah, they yeah, did some, the race state does yeah, not no, have to course. occur in reality for it to be vindicated. Yeah, I think, well, uh, it, yeah, hell yeah. I think uh, this, this is just my best effort to responsibly reflect my surroundings. I mean, the truth that I see. And uh, that's not like I'm, I'm going to cram this down your throat and say, you need to believe this. It's just my best yeah. representation. I mean, you got, I'm on your show right now just because I, I made a trailer. You know how many thousands of other people do trailers and they never get seen because they don't reflect that truth? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So this is just showing that, that I'm, I'm getting close. I'm getting close to something that resonates with a lot of different people. And so that, I'm just going to go with that and think that if I stick to my guns and I, uh, I pursue this film the way it has gone and I faithfully render my version of truth to film without being corrupted by corporate interests or anything like that, I think the film will, will succeed maybe as a, a cult classic someday. I don't think it yeah. might not do well in theaters. It might not hold up the public scrutiny as long as we exist in the, in the world as it is today. Mm -hmm. But you and I, as the people who go to see the film, we're going to be like, hell yeah, because that's what I think and feel, you know? Mm. Oh, yeah, man. I'm going to... Got another question. Um, would you would you like to see um, maybe a stage play of Grey State once? I know that's uh, you know a long way down the road, but possibly would you like to see this on in the actual you know theatre? People doing a stage stage play about Grey State. Grey State on Broadway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not? I, I, I've considered a graphic novel, I've considered a web series, but I have not considered a stage play. Um, I really don't know. I guess if someone wants to do that, that'd be, that'd be nice. Anything's Maybe. possible. I think you're badass. Well, I'm a huge graphic novel fanboy, so please do that. <laughs> <laughs> selfish plug. <laughs> Maybe, guys. I don't know. That'd be sick, man. Um, one thing, just speaking of that real quick, that I thought was dope, uh, kind of like a reverse graphic novel, was the post-apocalyptic uh, Book of Eli with Denzel Washington. The, the concept art that they did for that was all graphic art style. They actually have, like, graphic art uh, frames of sh uh, shots from the actual movie, which I thought was sweet. But uh, again, I mean, Book of Eli, I mean, I thought it was awesome, I guess, just because I'm a post-apocalyptic Mad Max fanboy. But a lot of other people I know hated it, but like, I, a lot of people said it sucked. So, I mean, I feel like every movie I like, everyone says it sucks. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I don't well, know. The Book of Eli, I, I, don't, I felt it relied on convention a lot as far as the post-apocalyptic realm goes. Like, this, if you're going to make a movie like that, this, these are the things that you have to show. And yeah. I, I don't think it was very original in that. I guess I, I saw the, the twist at the end coming, oh, he's been blind the whole time. Yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. saw that coming a mile away. And yeah. I, I, what really set me off, though, was when... I'm, I'm trying to remember. It's been a couple of years since I saw it, but he... He delivers the Bible, am I right, to the guy at the end? Yeah. And then it's put right on the shelf alongside the Koran. And yeah. like if you're gonna if you're gonna convince me that the main character believes in this and follows this and that is the uh, intent of the film, and then destroy it at the end by saying, Well, it has equal validity with these other systems of thought and these other faiths then you just destroyed your movie right at the last shot. Like, well, now I don't believe in the main character anymore. So that's that's what kinda set me off about that movie. Yeah, because if it just equalizes them all, then there's not really any uh, incentive for you to follow any any individual one. I'm all. utterly positive. I mean, you talk about corporate influence in films. I'm positive that that's what they did on purpose because that's what the Roman Empire did. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they brought in all these cultures. And it was called the pluralistic society where they gave all faiths equal credibility because by doing so, they're all marginalized. And so none of them can be true. And so well, it just Yeah, that's yeah, where you, you had... Um, absolutely. Yeah, this is a culture where nothing's true. And uh, whatever you think, that's your own personal truth. And then that's why you have a, a generation of youth that are grasping for absolutes these days and embracing, like, say, radical Islam. And that's why they're getting pissed off with the current system, because it doesn't offer them anything. Absolutely. It's very true. It's a valid point. I haven't actually seen Book of Eli. Um, I came in into, but it's, it's on my uh, to-do list. For sure, for sure. Um... Yeah, I, I had a follow up for that, but it, uh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. I was gonna say, uh, when he made up the Roman Empire point, 
Constantine, who was, you know, the, the last Byzantine Empire uh, emperor or whatever, he was uh, a member of the Sol Invictus, which was the Invincible Sun, and that was like a, uh, you know, a pagan secret society on that, when he, he basically combined that with Christianity when he, when he came over and, and changed everything, so like, pretty much what David was saying, they just made it all a system that just unified everything, you know what I mean, and just made it easier for everyone to, you know, like, basically follow it or standardize it or whatever. And that's why you have Christmas Day occurring on the winter solstice. Exactly. And, you know, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, just, uh, yeah, everything is just pagan. Like the Christmas yeah. tree. And you yeah. start to research these things and you're like, well, now what is, where, where's the basis of Christianity and what should I believe and what's been tampered with? Yep. Like King James Version. Yeah, you, you all, we always go there for accuracy because my boy Gaz is a Brit here, so. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> Stuff. Um, I mean, was there anything uh, else that you, you wanted to hit up, David, that we didn't get to? Anything about the film or just anything in general? Uh, no, you guys, you have some good questions. I definitely like talking about the uh, the hidden ideas behind the uh, the visuals I put in the trailer because they're all very precise. If you yep. drew any conclusions from like the visuals that occurred in the trailer, rest assured I meant to put them there. And it's been very reassuring to have you guys asking me all the right questions that I've been wanting to talk about that aren't just like Alex Jones, he just wanted to talk about like, well, this is real because you, know, you guys did a good job showing how real this was. I don't think <laughs> how real it is. That's completely incidental. I don't want to talk politics. What I want to talk is like yeah. the symbols, what they represent, where they come from, and how I can how I'm communicating them in the film. I've, I've enjoyed talking to you guys about that kind of stuff. Thank you, sir. I mean, you can tell we're pretty well read about this stuff, and I've watched it ten times, man. I think you're still slipping shit by me in every frame, so I don't want anything to get yeah. by me. I'm trying to break it down and, and see what we're going to come with for the feature film, because I think everyone who's seen this trailer that's, you know, interested in the subjects and the concepts is fucking pumped about it, man. Yeah, it oh, def definitely. Right. That's cool. Oh, yeah, man. And, and also, the way we like to do things on here is, you know, let people come on and... Um, as cliche as it sounds, but express themselves. So, like I say, if we've got someone who's making a movie, then we want them to talk about that movie. Um, you know, we don't want to get dragged down in talking about something completely foreign to that, because what's the point? They might as well come on as, um, you know, I guess it's, it's somebody else, not as the movie maker then. So, it's it's been awesome that um, you reached back to me when I contacted you about coming on the show and it's been such an interesting insight not just to um, the subjects and issues that Grey State um, covers but the really you know, deep and insightful um, take on what's involved in independent film, your own personal views on, on music and popular entertainment as a whole and you know I've really enjoyed listening to your and it's been awesome. I've, I've wanted to um, ask you then quickly if if you would be interested in appearing on the show again to um, keep us updated on the progress of Grey State, um, or to even talk about um, you know the film industry, um, anyone you're working with that you feel right they need a bit of promotion, and you know word needs to to get out of there. Um, I mean, is there anyone actually who you know who would maybe be interested in? doing a, a segment on the show or even you or some sort of show themselves where they can talk about film or talk about a, a movie they're maybe making as well I know it's a well, bit sort uh, of random there If you guys, I, I tried to get my uh, lead actor Danny Mason on the show but he had other things come up today but um, I would recommend if you guys want to have a separate show with just Danny he know, he's been studying this stuff a lot longer than I have and he can speak to great extent about Basically, anything that we've been talking about as far as occult symbolism and inner spirituality, all this stuff. He's a martial artist. He's been lecturing on the paranormal for several years. He's the one who actually introduced me to this whole world. So, uh, yeah, I would bring him on at some point if you want to talk about that. He's also a very talented actor. And yeah, we'd, uh, we'd love to have him on. Yeah, uh, I can hook you up with his contact info. But other than that, I would be delighted to be on the show again, guys. I had a lot of fun. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, we definitely awesome. want to get both of you guys, uh, whatever, you know, as many times you want to come on uh, until until the film comes out and what it does, you know, you know, we'll, we'll be promoting it right alongside with you guys because it's definitely something important that needs to be out there. Much appreciated. Absolutely, definitely. sir. And uh, definitely let me know what's up with getting those samples from the film because uh, my bro, Maccabean from the Bronx and I would definitely like to uh, chop that up and see if we can't come up with some original tracks for y'all. So I think that right, could yeah. be something sweet. 
Yeah, shoot me your email address, and I can get you hooked up with that Dropbox account. Absolutely, sir. We'll do. All right. Great. Um, I just want to thank you, David, for for coming on the show. As I said, it's been absolutely awesome. And um, get at me and VX and anyone from VX um, if we can help you in any way. And when you want to come back on the show, and we'll uh, pencil it in. Um, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Do you just want to give a shout out for you know Grace Day, all the different sites you've got, any other um, projects that, that that you do as well? I know you mentioned. Um, I think it was like your own. Oh, I forgot now, was it Hothead Productions, if I've remembered yep. that right? Yeah, um, sure, sure. You know, but, uh, yeah, Grey State is a movie about, I mean, what it is, is it's a narrative film. What it is not is a documentary. So if you guys, like, you know, you, you've all got the list of documentaries, like, go see this, and this will blow your mind. Well, this is not a documentary. This is a narrative feature film. It's a fictional story paralleling reality that is going to be as brutal and as realistic as I could possibly make it. And that means not pulling any punches with violence, with language, or anything. Even though I might be trying to say a certain message, I'm going to do it through the lens of reality. So if you guys look at your surroundings and you say, like, why isn't art representing this now? Where can I go to, like, like I'm feeling these emotions and stuff, but no one can really put this in words or image or thoughts. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the brutality of humanity once you take away the veil of society and that is what Grey State is if you want to find out more go to graystatemovie.com our crowdfunding effort is going on at indiegogo.graystatemovie and uh, you can get t-shirts, posters signed 8 by 10s if you donate high enough you can even appear in the film uh, you can get some props that were actually used in the film other than that my personal production company is hotheadproductions.com and I run the military prop rental company bulletexchange.com Awesome, awesome stuff. I, again, uh, peace, brother, and uh, thanks so much, man. It's like I said, it's just been awesome. Really great show, and um, look forward to speaking to you soon. We'll definitely help with the promotion for Grace Day and get word out about that movie because it's you know, need, needs to happen. Definitely does. And uh, you know, thank you, man. It's been awesome. Hey, thanks for having me on. Oh, you're welcome, brother. Yeah, thanks a bunch for coming on, man. It's been real. Yeah, thanks. You guys take it easy. You too, Definitely. You too bro. Okay, guys, we're going to get into um, a couple of tracks, um, and then we'll be back with a little uh, PXR update and some shouts, and then we'll be uh, going to the auto DJ. Um, but I just want to give another big up to um, David for coming on the show. Awesome stuff. Everybody check out graystatemovie.com and get that posted on your blog site, whatever, share it with your mates and um, let's help get word out about that project. As we say, don't just support you know independent music but independent movies as well. We've got to work together um, to have these um, original and really authentic um, forms of media and art get out there. Um, so we'll be back after these next couple of tracks. Peace out for now. <laughs> 